I will be preaching from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. I'm going to read from the New American Standard uh, Version, uh, New, American, New, Amer New American Standard Bible. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is my, uh, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the, the Lord's death until he comes. I want to take for a thought, uh, sermonic thought. Always remember his amazing grace. Always remember his amazing grace. In this passage, the Apostle Paul has no praise for the way the church at Corinth have abused the Lord's Supper. These people have taken what God meant to be a most meaningful and redemptive meal and have turned it into a time of feasting. In short, the church at Corinth have abused the grace that the Lord has offered them. Here in the text, we meet the Apostle Paul and we find that he has received divine instructions from the Lord regarding the church at Corinth. The problem is that the people of God have taken what God takes seriously with a careless and casual attitude. In a nutshell, the church at Corinth have taken the sacred tra tradition uh, of the Lord's Supper and have turned it into an ordinary meal. This church at Corinth have gone so far wrong into their disrespect for this sacred time of fellowship um, as believers that they have dishonored the name of the Lord. In our churches today, we are experiencing some of the same problems. And that what God takes seriously, we have taken lightly. In the text, Paul is not teaching the Corinthians anything new. He's simply telling the Corinthians uh, that what they are doing uh, is wrong in comparison to what the Lord had originally intended. We must understand that the original intent of the Lord's Supper was to commemorate the death of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. Amen. This was to be a memorial instituted by the one who himself was hanged on a tree and died for our sins. So as Paul addresses this body of believers, he addresses them as the messenger of God to remind the church of how they ought to observe the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul tells the people, this which I am giving to you, I received directly from the Lord. He is telling the people that what he received, the revelation, is the significance of the meal. There was no middleman. Paul says, I received these instructions directly from the Lord. Some suggest that Paul may have learned from the apostles before him, such as Peter and James. Some say uh, that Paul says, I received this from the Lord. So what is significant is that this is not Paul's first time using this language. That which I delivered to you, I received from the Lord. He says in 1 Corinthians 5 and, uh, 5 and 3, 15 and 3, Galatians 1 and 12, and a few other places where he says, I received from the Lord. And so I submit, I submit to you today that Paul validates through these words who he is in the Lord and where he gets his instructions from. I submit to you today that Paul um, says to us that what we um, 
what we receive from the Lord should be taken seriously and not casually. Paul says to the church that regarding these things of the Lord, you don't have to uh, believe Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, but trust in the name of the Lord. And so we must see here in the text that Paul is upset because the church has deviated from the proper observance of the Lord's death on the cross. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ allowed influences from the world to impact how they handle the things of God. But before we come too hard, uh, come down too hard on the Corinthians, we must understand the context of living in which they come from. In this community of people, you had the rich and you had the poor. You had the wealthy and you had those uh, who didn't know where their next meal might come from. You had the haves and the have-nots, kind of like a little show that's out right now. But the one thing this group of people knew how to do was have a celebration. Yes. And even in this context of living in 2013, one thing we know how to do, we know how to party. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. but, 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 but Paul says, in, in, in observing the things of God, I understand your context of living, but when it comes to the things of God, we must be careful with how we handle what God deems sacred. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ had gotten so caught up in celebration that there was no commemoration of the Lord's sacrificial death. Paul passes down this incredible gift of passing down what the Lord has given to him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus did not ask his disciples to do anything except other than to remember him. Whatever you do, whatever, whenever handling the things of God, in order to handle the things of God properly, Paul says, just remember. Just remember him. How did the church disgrace the institution of the Lord's Supper? They did so by creating divisions and distinguishing among themselves. The rich people would gather into one room, and the poor people would gather into uh, the courtyard somewhere out there. Uh, and they would have to fend for themselves. Folks were bringing in their own supper and beverages. Therefore, some uh, had and then some did not have. Therefore, that left some people drunk and the others ended up hungry and thirsty. So Paul asked three questions. He asked the Corinthians, do you not have your own houses in which to eat and to drink? He asked, is the result of your disrespect for the things of God because you despise the church of God? And finally, he asked, is their intention to hum humiliate those people who have nothing? Paul, said, Paul, Paul, Paul sees their disrespect so greatly that he, 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 he's just dumbfounded by what these people have done in regard for the things of the Lord. Basically, Paul is telling them, you cannot possibly have come to commemorate the death of Jesus because your approach to the Lord's table is wrong. Paul is showing us in the text that there is a specific uh, uh, way to approach the things of the Lord. We must remember that because the Lord is holy, therefore the things of the Lord are holy as well. This church at this instance became all about celebration and no commemoration. This church sitting at the Lord's table had become involved in wasteful celebration. They brought a worldly mentality to the table of a heavenly God. As a result, the people ended up disgracing the Christian unity and tarnishing the Christian spirit. We must recognize as believers that the, that the only way to properly remember the Savior is when, we, uh, when He is not behind but at the center of our worship. Paul is urging us that when it comes to the Lord's supper table, let us not forget, but always remember. Let us remember that the greatest meal ever prepared was not mama's meal, but it was the Lord's meal that commemorates the death and the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ. You ought to teach your children when you have them. 
that Christ died for their sin. Amen. And that because of that, gumbo is good, Amen. sweet potato pie is good, but the greatest meal ever prepared is known as the Lord's Supper. You can disgrace God's amazing grace sometimes, first of all, by forgetting what we should remember. We must not forget but we should remember that Jesus sacrificed his life for our sins. Verse 24 literally, literally says, this of mine is the body given for you. In other words, what you, are, uh, what you are receiving is something that has already been completed. Paul is saying there are no tricks, there are no gimmicks. Um, but but this, is, uh, uh, this is not just some, you know, this is not some trick, but Christ actually hung, bled, and died for you. And all you have to do is to remember. Paul remembered, and because he remembered what he received from the Lord, he now passes it on to the church at Corinth. He tells them on the same night Jesus was handed over, still Jesus gave the disciples something to commemorate his death. Paul remembers that in the midst of Jesus being betrayed, that Jesus is not focused on his betrayal. But he's focused on fellowshipping with his brothers. We must understand that there is no reason for Paul to bring this up had the church not deviated from this tradition in some way. Paul calls the church at Corinth to the carpet and tells them, you must not forget, but you must remember. And as we take the bread and the cup, we must not forget to remember that Jesus was handed over uh, to death that and he died for our sins. We must remember, secondly, that we celebrate God's grace by remembering not to forget. That the broken bread reminds us of Christ's body handed over for us. And the cup reminds us of his shed blood. We must remember not to forget that the man was bound, uh, that, that man was bound by sin. And the old covenant, under the old covenant, but this new covenant was provided through Christ's death which provided a complete atonement for God's people. Because of Christ, our past has been forgotten and our presence, present has been forgiven. And we have hope for a promising future. Christ died for all man's sins. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe. And what came from his hands and his feet and his side was more precious than silver and gold. The blood that set me free came from a life of sin and tragedy. But because of Jesus' shed blood, uh, we are free from our sins. We must remember that even though we did not remember, that even though we did not remember the Lord, he remembered us as his children. And he died for our sins. The remembrance that Paul is calling us to is not the mere recalling of historical, historical facts, but he is calling us to participate in a spiritual reality. Finally, we profess the Lord's amazing grace through the proclamation of God's redemptive drop. In verse 26, Paul says, when you take the cup and the bread, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. He says, you proclaim. So we must remember that in proclaiming, we are preaching. All of us have a temporary license when taking part of the Lord's Supper to preach and proclaim the death and dying of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen.